Hi everyone. Um, today is Thursday, um, May 19th or 20th? What is it? May 19th. May 19th, Thursday, 2022. And um, I want to share today my preliminary thoughts um, on a book called War is a Racket by Smedley Butler. And the reason I call this a preliminary, because I just listened to it, like literally just now. It is that short of a book. It is um, hardly uh, maybe 30 or 40 minutes. It took me 26 minutes because I listened to everything on 1.5 speed. But um, today, this morning, um, I listened to uh, Mario Maneko's, uh, Mario Ineko, sorry. His channel name is Maneko64. I highly recommend that you uh, listen to his uh, talk, his daily uh, market update uh, from today, also Thursday, March 19th. Um, he spoke about war and he recommended this book. And uh, I chance, you know, I went on Audible and it's hardly, it's a couple bucks to uh, get it on Audible because that way you can just hear it. So, um, I and my two boys listen to it. They are my, you know, my, my, my captive audience when I'm driving. They, they don't have a choice that way. <clears throat> but I'm glad that they listen to it because this has been a definite concern of mine, not just about um, the boys being drafted or anything but also you know with a quite a bit of this uh, like so-called equality um of our daughters being drafted because let's not forget like the, the the um the daughters of the of the um you know the big wigs are not going to be drafted but the daughters of everyone else in the in the name of equality and not equal equity <laughs> same outcome right same outcome in a body bag that's the outcome that's equity of outcome anyways um, um try not to get pissed here but <sighs> anyway so um this book holy shit it's brilliant it is freaking brilliant it is such a short book but his it's like my god you know, he, this guy was a Marine. He should have been a poet, I swear. Um, every sentence of his is structured concisely, perfectly. And each sentence, it's like almost like listening to Nietzsche, you know, where one, one sentence encapsulates a paragraph or a page. One sentence can be like a full-on proper quote that like summarizes everything his style of writing is absolutely beautiful i'm going to be re-listening to this book uh again and again and again <laughs> until i memorize the whole thing it's absolutely brilliant book anyway so i want to bring out some of the linkages and some of the things some of the updates so to speak of his book i began to listen to so he he um I think the book is written sometime in between the first and the second world wars because he makes a lot of references to the first world war and then he um and then he um you know he kind of does like a i would say maybe a bit of a forecast for what he thinks may happen in the second which actually did he talks a lot about the you know the the um well of course about all the war profits but here is the important part that I, you know, because I was in my head, I was extrapolating it further to the, so while I was listening, my mind was also thinking about, okay, what country and what industry and this and that is in what economic situation now. So I was like kind of uh, t taking what he said happened in World War II in the context of what actually also happened then in World War II. World War One, sorry, and then uh, I was taking what he said happened in World War One, extrapolating it to seeing where he got it right and not well, right. He got it all right in World War Two, and then taking it 
further to what are the parallels now and here is the very interesting thing so all the manufacturing industry all the things that you know he talks about to the american profits no actually the way to think about so if you do listen to this book the one guidance i'll give you is whatever he says about um the bankers yeah keep that that's that's true in fact i would say update that understanding of what he says about bankers too Tether, which is now located in China, and it's a private company, just so you know. Okay, also, uh, yeah, take the what he says about bankers and make that into, like, accredited investing, finance, that type of stuff. Okay, because they've kind of moved their Ponzi game that, there. Um, that's one thing. Second thing is um, what he says about America's position, you know, about like the manufacturing and all that, take that and move that to China as far as um, like, you know, where those, which companies would profit, move that company profile to China. Second thing. Third thing, take what he said about, um, you know, our, uh, uh, like uh, the, 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 the British and how much losses they had. And how then they came sneakily, uh, well, not they, actually, the bankers, right? Um, And said, oh, we won't win this uh, unless you help us. And then they sold (laughs) war bonds and financing charges. Oh, sorry, war bonds. They called it liberty bonds. Holy shit. Like, it's almost like any word, any... Any any words you hear from these people, you make the word opposite and then you know what it's really about. Like CARES Act. It's the fuck you act. It's not the CARES Act. Okay. Um, okay. So, um, what's the other thing? Um, oh, yeah. Uh, very important. What he says about Britain or like, uh, think it, America, the US is in Britain's position so whatever you hear about like oh you know like this shoe manufacturer this satchel maker this that this leather provider this commodity whatever just bear in mind in case you are tempted to think that America still profits from war and bear in mind that all the manufacturing capacity is offshore bear that in mind now, the other thing with regard to industries, he also talks about how um, the war of the future will be, you know, with the, all these like chemical and uh, he doesn't say biological, but we've moved there. <sighs> so, yeah. So think about that too. For that, I would recommend if you want to know what the next one decade is going to bring, I would recommend... Uh, that you watch uh, that uh, latest James Bond movie No Time to Die because it really talks about how um, um, it really talks about how um, (laughs) this new class of weapons that only wipes out um, only wipes out um, a certain DNA profile and all that DNA is kept like programmed in a database. Do we know of any place that's collecting database things, you know, every week of our um, youngsters, at least? Keep that in mind. Okay. Um, Yeah, anyways, I won't go all dark and dystopian. It's too early in the morning and it's too beautiful a day with the bright sunshine to get dystopian. (laughs) Oh God. Anyway, so okay, so those are some those are some points. Um, you know, as you listen to the book or read the book, to update it for the for this for this century. Secondly, uh, or maybe second and thirdly, um, I want to call your attention to um, uh, two articles that were read out this week by Mike from RTD channel. Now, uh, the name of the channel is Rethinking the Dollar. Uh, Mike uh, does like a, a, I keep calling it radio show, not radio show, like a call in and uh, 
say things kind of show but before he opens the lines he always um reads out articles and i really appreciate that because mm-hmm. i don't like sit down to read but i am always doing stuff so i always listen so he reads out these um so earlier this week on monday i think uh the, i think the title of the thing was the title of the the video was um sdr um uh, imf uh, sdr china or something put in those words in his channel you will see it it's this week and the next one was a video yesterday um about uh, about um uh, uh, what the you know what we sort of or what well, what the west rather um is uh proposing in terms of the IMF um uh, uh, like getting like 10 10% of each member state to uh contribute um towards uh like the whole Ukraine rebuilding thing and so those are two two more i would say supplemental listings and um the third one is um uh there's a channel called uh, judging freedom and there's a man by the name of judge napolitano and he um uh, interviewed a man by the name of scott richter or richter or something anyways so just look up judging freedom channel and check out scott something in our richner and listen to that commentary of what what he says because judge napolitano um and i'll come back to my ex two articles because those are super important um judge napolitano asked scott richner that hey this is this article that's been written uh, like kind of quoting you Did, did you say this like are you, did, are you and and he goes about explaining because what has happened it seems is that the reporter or the person reporting the things that this Scott guy said he's kind of taken what he said but he's drawn opposite conclusions um and he's drawn the conclusion somehow that um that uh, Russia has lost the war already and Scott is like no that's not my conclusion and so i won't say anything more about that you must listen to that interview where judge napolitano asks scott to explain um it's very useful it will show you the whole picture and why am i saying i because do, i don't want to draw conclusions about what will or will not happen about this war okay um that's why now why did i even bring up the interview with um uh, uh, on on the judging freedom channel because this is very relevant to the two articles on the IMF on the SDR that uh, Mike from RTD read out <clears throat> point number 1 he said on monday or the article he read out said that basically um uh, the US the US so the way the sdr works is back in the day in 1960s late 60s 68ish sometime after kennedy passed or not passed he had lead poisoning <laughs> um yeah sometime after kennedy um when there was a lot of turmoil also in india by the way because like uh, that north region the um, Lal Bahadur Shastri was also killed um because I, I am Indian I grew up in India um and uh, I was not uh, born yet in the 60s but um I heard about this it, it was still not settled he was he was he was he was killed he was killed I won't go there um in Uzbekistan or some some place where he went to do like a peace treaty or something and he was very much you know pro empowering the farmers and all and then the americans wanted to sell their like the crap and improve their guns and butter shit so they were selling guns to pakistan and to kill us and then selling you know not selling subsidizing us with their damn charity butter oh it just anyways um sorry way off tangent 
1960s, 1968-ish, the SDR was released. The SDR is equivalent or was equivalent to at that time to uh, like point something something, point zero eight um, grams of gold, okay? A point eight, sorry. Anyways, right now, um, there still is a little bit of a peg, but the, um, it's... Um, the SDR is about uh, what is 1200 or something, 1200 SDR for one ounce of gold is the current peg. And this is something that, um, that Mike from RTD, I, I really, I, I need to make a more in-depth one on SDR because um, I'm like, no, 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 wait, 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 <laughs> SDR is the more multipolar, um, you know, currency backed, uh, gold backed, um, proxy money that's only only for use by governments it's literally that um, you know that saying of like gold is money of kings it's literally that and so this business of them increasing the weightage of um, increasing so the, if you increase the weightage so oh, let me back up so the SER is equal to a, a certain amount of gold then how do you calculate that SDR that SDR is comprised of a basket of um, of currencies that belong to member nations. N then each nation has that percentage weighting, right? America, yes, has the highest percentage. But in increasing the Chinese per the percentage of the percent weightage of the Chinese yuan. Um, you don't just think about it in terms of oh so america and china both increased think about who is who did china supersede now and if you look at that it superseded germany this is probably the first time that china has ever superseded germany in terms of <clears throat> in terms of its weighting for anything um you know strategically now, um, what that means is that the Chinese yuan currency is worth more. This kind of weakens the German bonds, right? Also, what does it do for the SDR now? Uh, or what does it do for the markets, so to speak? Um, so if you've noticed, um, the Japanese currency was one lever, and I spoke about this a little bit in a video called uh, the, you know, um, the geopolitical and psychological reasons behind why, you know, what's going on with the, with the Japan's support of the U.S. markets and the bond market, the U.S. bond market. But here's the thing. In what has happened, <clears throat> in what has happened in increasing um, China's share, they have almost enlisted China as one more ally in propping up the U.S. bond market and the markets in general. Because as you increase their weightage, um, you, you, uh, as you increase their weightage, you allow them to um, strengthen their currency you allow them to sell dollars too. So you give them the currency flexibility that will then help um, you to enlist them in manipulating the market. Um, and um, that probably bears another explanation video all of its own. Um, but in any case, so, so that's how, like, so the SDR basket that's comprised of all these, right? Um, if you would have noticed, like in the last few months since December, the um, the Chinese um, the Chinese um, uh, currency had been strengthening quite a bit, and uh, you wonder hmm, why? Because they like um, you know they they or I don't mean why we know why, but or at least I know why. And sometimes I am guilty of not of thinking that you know why, just because I know why. Uh, but I mean, when I say why, why, why did they allow it to strengthen? Well, uh, because usually the Chinese they try to 
not allow their currency to strengthen too much because they want to be competitive exporters. So if your currency is too strong, then you're not a competitive exporter. But now, yeah, sure, they, they don't want it to, to increase now because they need it to strengthen so they get their seat at the table and then they can do whatever the heck they want with it, right? So you have to think about it in that in, the, in those terms. Um, so that's on the SDR uh, first video that uh, my conclusions on, well, some of my conclusions on the first article that Mike from RTD read. The second one that he read out yesterday, this is absolutely genius. Holy shit. Like you have to, you have to, um, like you wonder, you know, in the Buddhist um, uh, cosmology, there's a guy named Mara. He's like their version, the Buddhist, it, Buddhist Buddhism is not a theistic religion. So it's a, um, you know, they, they, it's a, Mara is this energy of like the strategic control group. And you have to admire how this, <laughs> these people are like controlled by Mara sometimes. Because here's the thing. The article that Mike read out yesterday, it talks about how, um, um, the, so they've already declared victory. Uh, something, um, the, 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 there was some, some proposal about um, uh, since Russia is now defeated, this is where the Judge Napolitano um, and Scott Richter um, interview comes in because that's, that's being used as the premise to say they already lost. So now we want to use all the Russian central bank's um, um, uh, reserves to rebuild Ukraine. And then the second bit was, uh, so in, in the article yesterday, and the second bit was, um, you know, and the remaining shortfall of funds should be used by, uh, or, you know, they're proposing that if all the member countries uh, pay uh, you know, you use, uh, contribute 10% uh, to this till, then IMF can go ahead and not contribute it, give Ukraine a loan. <laughs> so it's not like, <laughs> it's not like they're giving them anything. They, they're indebting them. They're making them a debt slave. That's horrible. Anyways, so, um, yeah, so the, 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 so with this, this, this deal, right, this 10%, and now think about that article that Mike read out on Monday. Because basically, it's like they in increased the percentage allocation for China. And then they took it down again, right? That's why they I, China probably even like agreed to uh, this or may agree to this 10% contribution. Though they might back out of it. They may take their 10% increase and then not not agree to the to the you know the 10 percent contribution you know they'll say they'll probably say like i oh, know we'll just build everything going back to the book by um uh why am i blanking on this brilliant guy's name now um going back to the book that i just listened to so yeah wow war strategy Yeah. Anyways, um, on that dark note, <laughs> I'll leave you to it. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy the weather wherever you are because it, it is quite beautiful. Look, it's so beautiful outside. Just so beautiful outside. Especially that my favorite little tree. Okay. Bye, everyone. Take care. <laughs>